All right, not everything's been roaring of late. In fact, some high-quality stocks I really like have been marking some time. Take Cisco, the big networking company that's become a major player in online security and the Internet of Things. After a remarkable run last year, Cisco's up more than 40% over the last 12 months. The stock has stalled in the low to mid-40s for several months here. Now, some of that is just consolidation as investors try to digest their earlier gains. But there's something else going on, too. When Cisco reported about a month ago, the company delivered some solid results. I liked it. The modest top and bottom line beat, inline guidance. But the stock got dignity in response, and the darn thing's been struggling the attraction ever since. So is this merely a temporary pause on the road to higher prices? This week, Cisco is holding a big event for its customers and partners, Cisco Live US, where they've made some big announcements, like an expanded partnership with Google Cloud, a lot of it on it in the uh, documents. Uh, could this ignite the next leg up? Let's take a closer look with Chuck Robbins, the chairman and CEO of Cisco Systems, get a better sense of how the company's doing where it's headed. Mr. Robbins, welcome back to Man Money. Hey, Jim, it's great to be here. It's good to see you. I hope you've been well. Oh, same, same. I hope same for you. Let's go right Everything's to it. Everything's great. Our Warriors won the uh, NBA championship. Well, that's very, yes, that's right. I saw you knocking Cleveland in one of your presentations, and I could have knocked Atlanta because you can't <laughs> sign JJ. But let's go right to it. You got 30,000 people <laughs> attending, all right? I want to know what you announced yeah. and what you're hearing because you got all your customers and partners out there. Yeah, you know, Jim, what we talked about is really uh, the continuation of our journey right now to help our co customers actually build their future network infrastructure that allows them to deal with this multiple cloud environment that they deal in. We call it multi-cloud. And uh, we announced a level of automation and analytics that has machine learning and all of the great technologies. We announced that today to help our customers continue to automate, take the cost out of their infrastructure, as well as things like the Google partnership, which really enables our customers to seamlessly move their workloads from their private clouds through the network into the public cloud, and they can run the same technology on either end. So we've had a lot of good announcements this week. There's a lot of great energy, and we're very excited about what's going on. Chuck, the uh, fabulous interview with Diane Green from Google, um, Google Cloud. And what's interesting to me, and maybe you can explain this, is this is not what Cisco looked at five years, like five years ago. I think the, the buy side, so to speak, is still not caught up with what you're doing because you would not have sat down with Diane Green five years ago. Tell us about that partnership. Well, well Diane Green might not have sat down with us five years ago, but we are, uh, you know, the thing is, is that what our customers are looking for is they're looking for the, the public cloud economics and the ability to actually have applications and write applications one time and then deploy them to any cloud. And what Google has pioneered is this Kubernetes open source platform that they have with Istio. And we're actually integrating that into our technology, allowing our customers to run that on premise, but then also building the capabilities for those, work, those applications to seamlessly move into Google Cloud if that's what our customer would like to do. And so the network plays a tremendous role with security, with policy, and actually allowing our customers to make that happen. And that's what we talked about this week. Right, well, on the last conference call, you're talking about the journey, as you mentioned. You're going toward more and more subscription. And if you looked at the deferred revenue, if you looked at what you're booking that's, that is not necessarily going to be this quarter's earnings, it's exploding. And yet people do not seem to see that you were on the same journey that Adobe was a couple of years ago. Can you help explain to people why they're not seeing what the subscription revenue really looks like? Well, Jim, we've, on every call, we've been giving uh, the metrics around how much of our software and subscription you know, deferred revenue is on the balance sheet. And it's been growing substantially over the last you know, 10 quarters. And so I think that that, in addition to understanding that as we rolled out the Catalyst 9000, and this is the first in an entire portfolio of refresh products that we'll be launching over the next couple of years, that you know, 25% of that business is in deferred in a subscription on top of a network switch, which we'd never been able to do before. And so I think that you know, we've had a very good run with the stock, and uh, I think that uh, you know, we, we announced guidance to your point, which was in line and also reflective of one of the fastest growth quarters we've seen in a few years. So we feel really good about where we are, and we feel great about the transition that we're driving in the company. There was a key day, May 1st, Chuck. It's a day where you announced the acquisition of a company, 
privately held company. Uh, Amy okay. Chang runs it. Not the kind of acquisition typically I would have expected from old Cisco. And at the same time, you agreed to sell service provider video software solutions, which was very much what old Cisco looked like. I want you to describe the pivot using that met those two metaphors, because I don't think that a company like a company would have normally been under the Cisco fold. And I used to think that that video conferencing is being key to you guys. Well, I think if you just focus on a company and Amy, who is a tremendous leader, she's got experience at Google. She was involved in the original creation of their ad business, so she un understands analytics. She's built this incredible platform at a company that has mass hundreds of millions of pieces of data that we saw as our collaboration portfolio continues to evolve. We see the opportunity to leverage her skills, her team skills, and the application platform they built to actually bring intelligence, so art, AI technologies, mm -hmm. data sets into our collab portfolio. So you can envision you know, experiencing a WebEx meeting with, with someone on the other end and receiving information about that individual in real time uh, that's available in public sources. So I think the modern software capabilities, the massive platform they built, the AI and data experience they have, are gonna really take our collaboration portfolio to the future. All right, one last question. I've got to give you a chance to respond. We had Mark McLaughlin on last week. Of course, he's uh, uh, retiring and uh, Nikesh Aurora's coming in. But he said, you know, we took big, you're taking big contracts from Cisco and in security. Now, security has been a bulwark of what you've tried to introduce. I cannot let him say that without asking you whether you're taking business from him <laughs> or whether you're really seeing him in the marketplace. Well, first of all, Mark's actually a good friend of mine, and I have a ton of respect for him as a human. He's a great guy. Um, listen, here's what's happening today. You have to be able to ingest threat information from endpoints, from the network, from email, from the cloud, and actually correlate that very dynamically and then defend automatically to actually solve the problem we're trying to solve in the future. And we're the only company that has that architecture, and we're the only guys that see 20 billion threats a day are enabled to correlate those in real time and actually defend across our entire customer base. And you know, we also have this Talos organization, which is phenomenal, that actually processes using machine learning and all those algorithms, these 20 billion threats. And they also were the guys who discovered the VPN filter uh, okay. you know, attack or threat just a few weeks ago. So I feel very good about our ability to compete over the next five to 10 years in security. All right, that's good. I always have to give you a chance to talk about that. Congratulations on a great meeting and some <laughs> really terrific presentations today. That's Chuck Robbins, Chairman and CEO of Cisco. You want a cheap stock? Here it is, CSCO. May have money's back after the break. Booyah, Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.